What's up, everybody? Uh, I had just got my car, well, got uh, car washed, and now I'm getting ready to pull over and chat with you. So I was at a study this morning, and sorry about the shakiness. You're on a little gimbal-y thing, and it's not very steady, but it'll be steady here in a second. And I was meeting with a brother out for coffee at the New Mocha's. And as I was sitting in the new mochas, we were talking and looking, or at least I was, because it's, it's a cool new mochas, and man, it looks pretty. And um, uh, I was amazed by how much uh, it changed and it looked different. And, and we like new. Our eyes, we look at things and go, wow, that's kind of neat. I'm not against it, kind of like it. We'll probably still keep going. Uh, but so often, um, we, we are intrigued by the new. It's way more busy than, than the two mochas combined, I'd say, because it's something new. We really get intrigued or um, enticed by the new. Uh, so I wanted to, to continue in, in Matthew chapter 6. And in Matthew chapter 6, we're, we're digging deeper in. And we're digging deeper in and go over there. And remember, this is just a, a read through. And I encourage that you read uh, and you keep reading on a daily idea. The person I was meeting with, that's one thing they were sharing, that they're reading through uh, the Bible every day. And it was started with working on a physical thing. They were working on trying to be do exercise every day. And after last year where they completed every day except two, how cool is that? Uh, they then were compelled to say, well, man, if I'm willing to do that for the physical, why don't I do more in the spiritual? It was a neat thing. Uh, and so this idea that we're going to dig in, it shows where is our emphasis. That's really what the big key of this whole next section. Uh, God has, Christ uh, has challenged us in saying, you know, when you fast, not if, but when you fast, when you pray, not if, but when you pray, uh, when you give, not if, but when you give. And those challenges are there to show you this question. How did those questions hit you? Uh, those statements are a question. Was it hard when we talked about giving? Did you have to convince yourself? Did you question, well, Robert, you don't get it. Robert, you're quoting the Old Testament, whatever it is. You, were you holding back? Are you holding back? I, I struggle with that sometimes. And, and this is a way to say, well, maybe I do need to start learning to see what my focus is. Because did you hear giving and go, yeah, I get the privilege to give. Yeah, I get to serve to give. Yeah, I get to do. The, the question is how much of God's uh, do I want to keep? Or was that question hard when I said the idea that, you know, those who love give? Well, wait a second. The, they don't do it the way I like it. Or man, I can't give because I'm barely making it. Now, I don't want you to give to the point that you can't feed your family. But what if you did? Do you, do you see it? Jesus, later on, will see that he speaks to the, the woman at the temple who had uh, two mites, uh, two, these two coins, worth less than a penny back then. And he had told his disciples she gives more than any of the Pharisees or the teachers of the law did. And because she'd gone to the position to say, hey, now best I understand that those two mites were, were, were worth about the cost of a dove. And, and, and she gave up lunch. And, and it's a tr where your treasures, your heart will be also. Let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna read this next section. It's a pretty big section. But I want you to hear what, what he's saying. He's saying, if, if you start feeling and seeing that, you know, the things I just said were hard to believe, maybe then you understand what it is to have God in you. Because on your own accord, on your own will, you won't. But with God in you, 
you can and will. And I was so funny. So my wife was reading this morning out of Romans, and she's now doing studying through Romans, and she was in chapter 1, and, and she went, uh, was working through this concept of positional holiness. Now, there's positional holiness and progressive holiness. What that means, positionally, we're holy. We're set apart. We're a royal priesthood. We're adopted into the sunset. When you pray, say, Father. Now, then there's progressional holiness. There's this idea that as God is in you, it will grow in you, and you'll start seeing changes in your life. And so this is that moment where you can then self-evaluate, go, man, I did struggle when Robert talked about giving. Man, I do. It's hard to pray to God and talk to God and be purposed and not just recite some unthinking prayer. Man, fasting? I don't think I've ever given up anything. And so you start thinking those things, then you start going, okay, God, where can I start growing in those today? So let's read this and as we go through. Verse 19, and we're going to go all the way. We're going to do a larger reading today to 24. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, then your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how greater is that light? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other. Or you will devote yourselves, devote yourself to one or despise the other. Can anyone serve both God and money? I want to point something out, the sandwiching of this last group of passages. In chapter 6, we started with God stretching us, reminding us, affirming to us the idea of giving. And we didn't spend a ton of time focusing on the idea of money. Money is mammon, right? comes from the word mammon. It's a god. Mammon was a god. And so what he's saying is, he isn't saying throw all money away. He's saying... Do you, will you do well with what you have? Can you control that so that I can help you understand and give you more? Now, why I think that's so important is because he's going to say, this is what you need to understand. You need to control this thing that money makes the world grow, go round. We have to control our issues with money. So often we are, we're so maybe more in the American culture, I don't know, but we are so wrapped up about money. And why this is so important is with what you do with a little is what you'll do with a lot. So right now we get to see some blessings of God as we're growing with God and he starts saying, wow, look what God's doing for me. But I got to keep it. I got to hoard it or... I've got to manage it. Now, taking care of it, the way God designed is taking care of it. But so often, you know, God just gives examples and we, we, we haven't gotten there yet, but we will, like with the, the, the prodigal, the, good, the story of the Good Samaritan. He, he gave, and, and he then, uh, if you get to the final part of that story, he left the, the person with the innkeeper and says, I'll pay you whatever else is owed. That's not smart financially being willing to carry burdens like that. And so this real reality that God's saying, I'm going to change your paradigm. We talked about giving, talked about praying. We talked about giving up or fasting. And then he wraps this as they're wrestling through and he says, let me make it really clear. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Let me make it even clearer more so. You cannot serve both God and money. That's it. We have to understand that the the, the lie of this world is telling us that we are the ones who sustain ourselves. Do you make gravity? 
Do, do you make the world spin? Do you cause oxygen to work? Yet you think you're the ones that keep the money in your bank? And if you can understand this key, it starts growing wonderfully in your life. It's an investment that lasts into eternity. And he's going to say more and more about that by next, by tomorrow. We're going to look at not worrying in reality. And, and uh, this is a hard, and not to be political, but Colby Bryant, right? He, he just passed. And, and I guarantee you he wasn't thinking that when he got on the helicopter. The families that were with him weren't thinking that when they got on the helicopter. We think, wow, man, if I had his money, his money did nothing for him. Whatever money unspent, unused in this life is useless. Whatever money saved is worthless. Whatever money in giving to God and, and sacrificing and, and understanding that it does not control you is eternal in the sense that, that you start living this life serving people. And money is just a tool. But you start living your life doing that, it doesn't control you and you understand who does, and that's God. So money's an interesting topic, but the real understanding here is, look, where are we gonna serve? What are the things that manage your money? Is it the degree that you're so proud of? Good, I'm glad you have it, use it for God. Is it your inheritance that you, that you were given? Good, I'm glad you have it, use it for God. In his ways, if you're not really sure, go to chapter five, you'll see. Uh, that you're meek and, and you're willing to serve and you're willing to let people not like you and do all those things. But the choice is this. There's a light or a darkness that you can have in you. As you let that light shine, it starts changing your life. And it's amazing. Hope you have a blessed day. That's a short minute. We're way past 11 minutes. Keep reading, because we're going to get I like what's next. It's about not worrying. Get so caught up about worrying, and I'm going to go get on the road now. So i got to go fill up with gas, because I'm going to go to the Mercy. No, I'm going to Winter Jam. So I will see you guys tomorrow. You have a blessed day. Bye.